Hello and welcome. This is going to be a video on building a super smelter without any minecarts. Now if you're happy with minecarts, go ahead and build a minecart based super smelter. It's generally easier and faster and more easy to scale. However, minecarts do have some disadvantages with chunk loading and chunk boundaries as well as noise. So if you don't want to worry about minecarts disappearing or you want your super smelter to be as quiet as possible, please continue watching the video. So in here we have three chests, an output chest, a fuel chest, and an input chest. I'm just going to get myself some sand, and some coal. We'll just put some coal in the input chest, oh sorry, the fuel chest. we we'll put some sand here. So we'll do, oh let's do a full barrel's worth. Now it takes a little while for the system to get going because it does need to do that first 10 second smelt and run over the entire lines. But in a little while we should start seeing some items come in here. And we'll just wait a little bit for it to get going. Here they come. So as you can see, um, we've already got 16 items. That would be from the first pass. And in another 10 seconds they'll start coming in again. But now they'll keep continuing. So you'll see that we're getting four items a second coming in and this will basically match the pace we'll see the items coming out so as fast as two hoppers can pull from a double chest coming out is basically as fast as they're going to be coming back in it's not easy to make a system any faster using hoppers um, and that's because we've got on each line 24 furnaces on each line if you could get to 25 there'd never be a pause and it'd be as fast as hoppers could work but it would pretty much double the amount of iron involved so I've left it at 24 for the moment. The system is also pretty simple it comes down to a few different components the first component is what I like to call my furnace hopper clock it's 100 ticks total 5 ticks off 95 ticks on. Now 5 ticks is to allow a hopper to pull an item down get past its 4 tick delay and then push and pull an item again. So this is what allows all the hoppers to pull it out of the line that comes across into the furnaces. And then for the remaining 95 ticks of the 100 ticks it's allowing the furnaces that run along the top to run. Furnaces along the top are running on this clock over here. It's a 4 tick clock, 2 ticks on, 2 ticks off. And that's because hoppers basically can push an item every 4 ticks. And by doing this we essentially make it so that the hoppers run together. So what does that mean? Well we can sort of demonstrate over here. So I have two locked lines of hoppers, one locked on a clock and one locked on a not a clock. We've got some irons and barrels over here and if we start processing them and wait for them to get a little way down and then flip the bottom again. What we'll find is on the left we get a gap but on the right we don't get a gap. And that's because these hoppers aren't all working at the same time. They're offset from each other. Whereas these hoppers are forced to work within the same tick space. So no matter where we stop it, we'll find that there's never any gaps. If you have a look in these hoppers, they always have exactly one item. So it doesn't really matter when we stop the clock. Um, you know, that clock can come in whenever it wants. And we'll know that the items from that barrel are going to be perfectly distributed along these hoppers. So let's talk briefly about how these two clocks work. It's basically what you see in front of you. So we have a input source into a comparator. It really doesn't matter what that input source is. This could be a lever or a signal from somewhere else. It feeds into a repeater on one tick, feeds into a piece of redstone, six comparators, two dust, and something to take the output coming back into a block so that's a delay uh, sort of a fading pulse extender we've got 15 levels of pulse to descend and six comparators which basically means we're multiplying 15 by 6 which happens to be 90 then we take another three ticks delay from this block one tick for the comparator one tick for that so five ticks and that will give us our extra 5 ticks on top of 90 for on and 5 ticks for off. Over here 
we have our four tick clock. It is simply a comparator for one tick, a repeater for one tick, feeding background with a comparator on subtract mode so it turns itself off of each time it feeds around. The only other interesting thing about this is this compost here. The reason we use a compost as a signal on this one is the compost isn't likely to interfere with any other signals around it, but it also can be restricted to a signal strength of one, which basically means any signal strength here can turn this clock off. And that's important because we're going to be using an outside signal apart from this to lock this clock in the on position. Between those two systems, we have something that can run over here. So the items feed into these hoppers. The two tick pulsing clock allows them to flow along here. And then every 100 ticks, this top line is frozen. And we just saw it there for a second. And these other two lines for the hoppers beneath them are unlocked. That allow for five ticks, that allows these hoppers to push and pull an item. Now if we wait here for about 10 seconds, we should see it happen. Maybe on ooh, watch one of these poppers. So it shouldn't have finished finished yet, unless I'm very much mistaken. There it goes, and we can see an item come in and out. If you look in here, there's always exactly one item smelting at any time. And when it finishes smelting, we immediately start smelting another item without gap, which means these furnaces never have more than one item in them, but they're never without an item, making the fuel use as efficient as possible. The only other thing left to do, apart from that clock and the furnace clock below, is to connect to the low line. So this is our clock. We take the output signal from here on the clock, We've just propagated the signal. We have a torch tower over here for this lock line. And we have a torch tower over here for this lock line and inverting it to lock the four click tick clock. And that's basically it. That's the entire super smelter for processing the items. The last bit, somewhat optional, is what allows us to take the barrels upwards. We could just skip this bit and have all the barrels in there, but personally, a super smelter like this, it's big enough that I want to hide it underground. So this is the double hopper item elevator. Um, it's completely silent, and if we take some items, we chuck it in. It doesn't make any ticks, but at the same time, the items come up as fast as the hoppers can operate. And we can see that if I look in these droppers at the bottom, you'll see that an item turns up, but before the next item turns up, it's already set upwards, and we've already processed all the items. Building this is relatively simple. You have the droppers running upwards next to each other, two comparators, these feed into blocks into redstone dust. Because there's never more than one item there, it will always pulse through. Um, and then this repeater comes into that target block, and that comparator to run as a clock, and that lets this dropper go um, and the observer towers propagate the signal upwards so that all the droppers above them also process and that's about it uh, that's the entire design like it's really quite simple